mentioned about exercise. So how important is exercise as part of uh, kind of your health protocol or the health protocol? It, it's completely 50-50. Like it's absolutely always perfectly 50-50. So, you know, I used to think, oh, diet's most important and exercise not as important. But if you just look at someone who uh, lays in bed in the ICU for a week or two, and then can't walk afterwards and has to learn how to walk up a flight of stairs again. Or if you look at someone who goes into the International Space Station and is in zero gravity for a month and their bone density just immediately goes way down and they're weak and they have so much strength loss so rapidly. I mean, you start to realize, oh, it's definitely 50-50 diet and exercise. So each one is equally important. And anyone who's like, really, really focused on their diet and isn't exercising, they're just completely wasting their time. Like they would be better off just uh, spending, you know, half as much time worrying about their diet and then just going out and doing resistance and cardio and walking and that kind of thing. Right. And, and so what exercise mix would you kind of think is good? Got it. So there's basically three forms of exercise that absolutely everyone should be doing. Uh, the first one is just general movement, right? Humans are supposed to walk around a lot. And so uh, I love the metric of, you know, 10,000 steps a day. You know, you wear your Apple watch or your Fitbit or something and track your steps. And uh, you really want to be hitting at least 8,000 steps a day. Uh, probably benefits start falling off over 12, 15 thousand day, but 10,000 steps a day is a really solid goal. It's evidence-based. You want lots of walking, lots of general movement. You want to stay active. You know, you want your standing desk. You want to walk around a lot. You want to, you know, park at the end of the parking lot and walk more. It, basically, you're trying to walk more because that's what humans are supposed to do. And that's the first form of exercise, right? And you should just build that into your day where you just walk a lot. Um, <clears throat> the other one is resistance exercise. You have to very specifically and intentionally put the maximum tension in your muscles uh, as high as you can stand for as long as you can stand it. And I'm talking lifting weights to failure or body weight moves to failure. In my book, it's all body weight, push up variations, push ups, pull up squats, push pull legs are the three basic human movement patterns, uh, pushing, pulling and legs against gravity, like a squat motion. So at bare minimum would be push pull legs uh, with maximum effort, maximum intensity, maximum time under tension, all the way to failure, um, at least twice a week. Pretty much every human on earth should be doing a full body resistance training exercise, uh, push pull legs at least twice a week. And that could be as simple as a set of push-ups all the way to failure, set of pull-ups all the way to failure, or rows if you can't do a pull-up, uh, and then some sort of leg move like lunges or squats all the way to failure. Um, in my book, we, we break it down to the absolute bare minimum effective dose of exercise, which is pretty much just uh, one set to failure, push, pull legs. There's a ways to extend that a little bit. You can do failure extension techniques like a rest pause where you go to failure, wait 30 seconds, go to failure again, um, something like that to, to get a little bit more volume in there. And you could do a, a tiny workout like that three times a week. It's even better than twice a week. Four times a week might even be better than three times a week, but at least every other day, or uh, I would say at least twice a week, every other day might be better. Um, so that's the second form of exercise, right? We've got walking 10,000 steps a day. We've got maximum tension in your muscles for maximum anabolic stimulus of skeletal muscle. Uh, and that's push pull legs at least twice a week, if not more. Uh, and then the third one is cardio, uh, getting up your VO2 max, your cardiorespiratory fitness, your ability to run up a flight of stairs without being short of breath. This VO2 max is more tied to outcomes than anything else you can measure in a human. So if I measure your cardio fitness, like if I put you on a treadmill test and see what your VO2 max is, which is like how good you are at cardio, um, how good you are at cardio is more tied to your lifespan than literally anything else I can measure on you strength, body composition, lab value, there's no, nothing else even comes close to your cardio fitness because this is measuring a whole bunch of stuff together, like your heart, your lungs, your circulation, your uh, mitochondrial function. You want to be good at cardio. Uh, people who are in good cardio respiratory fitness 
are 12 times less likely to get Alzheimer's dementia. That's massive. That's huge. There's, there's nothing with your diet that will ever get you that close. Uh, there's nothing with blood tests or measurements or biometrics that would even come close to that. <clears throat> so like cardio fitness is absolutely essential if you're trying to live as long as possible and not get dementia and have the biggest health span and lifespan. And I know your, <laughs> your followers are very interested in that. So do your freaking cardio. You also want to do it with a very, very high level of intensity and effort. You're trying to do progressive overload, just like you do with resistance training. So with resistance training, you put more weight on the bar. So you get stronger steadily over time. You do the same thing with cardio. Let's say you're doing a half an hour of cardio every day. Uh, well now you, you know, you're on the treadmill half an hour a day. Now you want to go faster. Now you want a higher incline. Now you want a higher wattage. Now you want to get uh two mile, three miles in, in the same 30 minutes that it took you uh, originally to walk, you know, one mile. So you're basically going up on intensity and effort and heart rate and VO2 max eventually. And you're trying to get in the best cardio fitness you can with progressive overload. And in the book, I talk about doing that in really, really brief periods of time with high intensity interval, interval training, where you're just going all out maximum intensity. And that's where you get the fastest positive adaptations with the very least amount of time. It's pretty painful, but uh, you can always trade off intensity for duration. So if you're getting the intensity super high, you don't have to spend as much uh, time on it in duration, but those are the three exercises everyone should be doing cardio with progressive overload. So you get better and better. Uh, resistance training again with progressive overload so you get stronger and stronger and then general walking so you're you know mobile and active and moving and getting your 10,000 steps in so just a couple of little questions so do you have a body weight exercise that is similar to a deadlift uh no so like i i do some things like like i'll do an inverted row well where i hang from a pull-up bar and put my legs straight up in the air and do basically a row, which is, is simulating a deadlift from the, from the waist up pretty much, but it's really not loading your legs, your hamstrings, your quads, the same way a deadlift is. There's pretty much no good single exercise that gets all of the deadlift. <clears throat> but like I said, you can do inverted rows, which will hit your upper body pretty much just as good as deadlift. And then for legs, I have to do single leg body weight exercises to get the same load. Like I do pistol squats or single leg squats or Bulgarian split squats. I'm doing a squat on one leg and that's actually super hard. And if you don't know what a pistol squat is, Google it, look it up on YouTube, try to do it. It's almost impossible. I can actually get a huge load on my legs with single leg squats. Um, approaching what I get from deadlifting by doing one leg at a time. Uh, but again, that's just isolating the legs. And then the body weight inverted rows is just isolating the upper body. And there's no single body weight exercise that really encapsulates everything the deadlift does. Even if you're doing the pistol squats, single leg squats, like I'm doing and the inverted body weight rows, like I'm doing, uh, you're not loading your spine to the same extent. So you might not be getting the same, uh, stimulation of like your vertebra and your spine and your spinal erectors and stuff like that. So the deadlift is a great exercise. Um, <clears throat> if I did have to throw one weight exercise into my um, body weight lineup, the deadlift would probably be the one I would pick because everything else I can isolate pretty good. But yeah, deadlifts are, are good. So <laughs> I'm not going to say that there's a body weight exercise that's just as good as a deadlift in all the same ways. Cool. Yeah. And yeah, I've been trying to do the pistol squat. It, it, it is difficult. I agree. I, I cannot do it yet. <laughs> yeah. So can you tell me about your future plans with the PE diet? And are you working on another book at this time? Oh, yeah. So uh, the, the I'm technically still selling the PE diet for anyone who's interested. And I'm working on a, another book called Satiety Per Calorie. And it's just looking at all the practical things you can do to feel full and have satiety and automatically eat less calories. And it's really more of the same sort of thing, increasing protein and fiber and lowering energy density and that kind of thing. Excellent. Any idea when that's going to come out? You got like a target? Oh, uh, wow. Since it's uh, self-published, I have no deadline <laughs> and, you know, probably hopefully by the end of the year, but anything could happen. 
Excellent. Thank you. Really looking forward to that. So thank you so much for joining us today. So where can people find your the PE Diet book and follow you and find out more about your work? Gotcha. Uh, thanks. Well, you can check out the PE Diet um, book at thepediet.com or tednaman.com uh, or anywhere books are um, sold online. And uh, I'm on all the socials at Ted Naiman. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. And uh, uh, you can check out my website at tednaiman.com. Okay. We will link to them in the description. So uh, Dr. Naiman, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me.